Hi, Happy. I need some advice on what to buy. Okay, I get it. You want to know a keyboard to buy. And howdy hey, I'm Hippio Tech. And I'm here to help. I've been making keyboard videos for two years now, so I think I can help. Now, in order to give you guys the best recommendations, I've given myself some rules. The rules are the keyboards need to be in stock, they need to be hot swap, and I need to have seen them before. Now, about one year ago, I did a very similar style of video, and I'm gonna see how well it's aged. Let's just say keyboards have gotten a lot cheaper. Now, if you're just getting into keyboards and have no idea where to start, then you've come to the right place. In order to keep you guys entertained, I've picked out some of my favorite keyboards that I reviewed over the last year of making videos. These are keyboards that you can buy right now using any of the links down in the description, which will be affiliate links, which make me money. Speaking of money, you know what's free? Hitting that subscribe button because 79% of you haven't, and that makes me incredibly sad. You'll get an extra howdy hey if you do. Howdy hey. So these keyboards are in no particular order, but what I will say is I've saved the cheapest for last. Now, in my video a year ago, I said that the drop alt was pretty good and pretty affordable. Well, that has not aged very well. Coming in around $180 to $250, the drop alt is a pretty good keyboard that's too expensive. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, well then what's better? Well, it's been a year and Keychron is absolutely killing it. That's a name you're gonna hear a lot this video. The Keychron Q2 walked in, slapped the drop alt around, and said, get out of here. I'm the new big dog. Now this board is $180 fully assembled or 160 bare bones. If you're new to keyboards, we like stuff that we can customize, and most of the keyboards in this video will be customizable via hot swap. Basically what this means is you can take apart the keyboard and replace the switches without needing to solder, which is amazingly helpful. This keyboard is also a gasket mount, which we'll talk about later. Basically just means that it feels better to type on. Now you're probably thinking, oh, customization, big whoop, it probably looks decent. Well, what if I tell you it can also sound decent? That's pretty good, right? Now, this is a bit of a bonus shout out. The Zoom 65 is a keyboard I've reviewed in the past and they're a previous sponsor, full disclosure, but it's gonna be restocking quite frequently now, starting at the middle of August, which is why it's in this video. It's a full aluminum board with a gasket mounted design. It sounds incredibly premium and uh, the color options are quite nice. Now that's $160 without the keycaps and switches. So it's not the most budget friendly, but look at all this foam that it comes with. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Also honorable mention to the Bakken Echo, which sometimes comes in stock and the QWERTY Keys QK65, not in stock. These boards are arguably pretty cool. And honestly with keyboards, you gotta keep your eyes open for these types of boards that come in stock from time to time as they're usually a better value, but do require waiting. But that's why you kind of have to figure out what you want the most out of a keyboard and then weigh your options with how long you're willing to wait and how much you're willing to pay. Now I can hear you. You're saying, Hippio, these boards, they're like a hundred plus dollars. That's absolutely ridiculous. You're insane. I don't know what that has to do with any of this, but here's a budget option for you. Coming in at around 30 to $40, here's the Wilmier 60%. This can typically be found in stock at Amazon, link down below. And it's a diamond that needs some polishing. If you're looking to do some DIY, this might be the keyboard for you. If not, then uh, never again. Personally, I put $20 modding this thing and the video's in the top right, by the way. And I got it sounding good enough. I'll have some other budget options later in the video though. Just listen. Now here's the point in the video where everybody starts wondering, what about the numpads? I need my freaking numpad. Uh, bing bong, numpad time. Now I hear you, some of you want numpads and yeah, some of you are very weird. But I get it, I get it, there's like seven of you out there. Last year, I recommended the Epo Baker GK96 because it was one of the cheapest options that also gave you a numpad. Unfortunately, few things have changed in the space for numpad gang, but there are a couple things that I've looked at in the meantime. Now it's got all your standard stuff, hot swap, RGB, wireless, decent keycaps, decent switches. And there's also some fun other options like the TH96 that features a knob but in general, they're all just a bit expensive. Now, if you're really a diehard for a numpad and want a good board, well, then you could aim for the Keychron Q6. You remember everything I said earlier about the Keychron Q2? Well, this is that, but 
bigger with a full-size numpad. Zero compromises, nada. They've got some cool keycap colors. They've got an option to get it bare bones so you can build it out yourself. That's pretty good. But with shipping, that's gonna be around 210 bucks, which I know a lot of you are gonna have trouble justifying. And that's why I say for $100 less, get the EpoMaker GK96. It covers most of what you want, but it doesn't go too overboard. Now, is that too big? You want something smaller? Oh, okay. Well, last year I recommended the EpoMaker EP84 for 75% keyboard. This thing is pretty affordable, albeit a little bit cheap. But what if I told you that there's a board later in this video that's better for cheaper? Now, at this point in the video, you're probably wondering why does Hippio keep bringing up Keychron so much? What's going on with this guy? Is he a shill? Well, a little bit. I, I'm an affiliate for them. But let's just let past Hippio explain what I thought would happen. Another honorable mention is the upcoming Keychron Q1. This is a 75% aluminum board that looks like it's gonna shake some things up and maybe be better than the GMMK Pro. Yeah, the amount of stuff that's changed in keyboards in a year is crazy. Like this whole video making process is a nostalgia trip. Back then, if you wanted a good 75% keyboard, you kind of didn't have one. The GMMK Pro wasn't out. The Idabout ID80 was kind of like the only thing. Now at like 140 bucks, it's still in okay 75%. It's aluminum. It was my first keyboard. I'm partial to it. But the ID80 kind of falls short in a lot of places. The mounting style was pretty stiff, which arguably I did like. And it was very pingy and hollow and a little bit sketchy. Then came along Keychron that swooped in and said, howdy, hey, we're gonna sell you these keyboards that are pretty nice. Now, are Keychron keyboards perfect? No. Not by any means. In fact, I've clowned on them for sounding like blacksmith anvils from time to time. But now there's so many options for 75% keyboards that it's really hard to choose. All those features that used to be things that set keyboards apart, well, they're now just included standard, like hot swap. And gasket mounts are pretty cool when they work properly too. Like, look at this, gasket mount. These are the gaskets I was talking about earlier. They're usually little foams that make your typing softer. Oh, I got you there, didn't I? Yeah, that was uh, a little preview of my loudest keyboard ever video. <laughs> but yeah, all jokes aside, you can make any keyboard sound bad with the right switches and the right attitude. But the Keychron just got a little brother that is a lot cheaper that I'll look at very soon. But before we do that, we must first transition into budget town. Now you remember I said I was saving the cheapest for last and cheapest I also mean best. Wait a second, this is just the Gamma KK66 that I featured in my video last year. What's that? It's still one of the top budget keyboards? Well, yes and no. The K66 was one of the first boards that was easily available on Amazon, had south facing LEDs, hot swap, good enough stabilizers. And when you mod it out yourself, it can sound impeccable. In this example, I used about a hundred bucks to modify this keyboard. So it came out at about 150 total and sounds amazing. Now, this isn't the best keyboard yet, but this is a good example as to why being a little bit more creative with your purchasing decisions might be more fun and more rewarding in the end. It's nice to just buy a keyboard that's, oh, what's this? Is this a new challenger approaching? Oh my gosh. Sorry guys, I don't have the editing budget for that. And this is what you've probably been waiting for the whole video. What I would arguably say is the best value in keyboards right now. You're probably thinking, Hippio, this is just another Keychron board. It's probably a hundred plus dollars. No. It comes in at $65 bare bones and $84 fully assembled. Now wait, don't leave that comment that's gonna boost engagement. That is incredibly similar to the EP84, but the performance that you get out of this board is insane in comparison. It's loaded with a bunch of enthusiast features that you might think you won't care about, but are actually so nice. It's got dual stage feet. It's got silicone dampening. It's got these switches that are very nicely factory looped. It's got dampening foam in it, but it isn't a gasket mount, which means it's a little bit stiffer to type on than some of the other boards that I featured. 
But look at this thing, it's got RGB. Oh, I could be a gamer now. These keycaps aren't for everyone, but just listen to this sound test and that'll swoon ya. This is stock. But I'm not done yet. I've made keyboard videos for a whole year. You think this was the last thing I had up my sleeve? Budget gang, I hear you. You told me $80 ain't enough. Well, check this out. $20, ow, $20, ow. Now, this is from one of my most popular videos where I upgraded the most popular keyboard on Amazon. This is the EU Su, and it's as cheap as $15 from time to time. Now, it is bottom of the barrel basic, but it has some crazy, crazy potential if you're willing to give it some love. Kind of like me. <laughs> Now it's got terrible keycaps. It's got terrible blue switches. It's got a plastic case. You're probably thinking, Hippio, why is this in the list at all? This is garbage. Well, as I mentioned before, if you got a couple hours of time, which I'm assuming a lot of you might have more time than money, then you can turn this into something way, way better. These are $20 keycaps that I put on here. Not bad, right? Now, if you don't leave a like and a comment for how good that was, I don't even know anymore. But ultimately, all of the keyboards in this video are good in their own right, and it really just depends what you want, as keyboards are preference. Do you value having a keyboard that's just the best right as you buy it? Then one of these more expensive keyboards might be a bit better for you. Does every single dollar matter, but maybe you have a little bit more free time? then one of the budget options in this video might be suitable for you. Are you just really lonely and kind of need a friend? Well, any of these keyboards will work because the keyboard community is so nice. If I happen to leave a keyboard out that you can think of, then leave a comment down below as I'd love to know. I'm only one hippio, but I would love to try a bunch more keyboards this year and next year and the year after. And then I might go on retirement actually, but who knows?